Hi everyone, I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, I'm just here making a quick, quick video about worlds. Um, I need to go to sleep very soon and I'm about to wake up to a very, very, very busy life. Um, and I want to get this done and get this out there for everybody um, that uh, follows my channel. Um, so yeah, 2022, Netrunner World Champion. It's insane that I'm saying that. So many points during the weekend that I was like, it's definitely not going to be me. But somehow we managed to make it. Got the playmat right here. Um, and there we go. I I got a bunch of people that were there on the Sunday to sign it. Uh, I'm really, really happy about that. I do want to um, give a, a shout out to Jeff, who, uh, Ysengrin, um who I basically handed my plan to is like, Hey, I really want people to sign this. I kind of told everybody when I went up on the stage and, um, was speaking on the mic, but I didn't really specify where or how. Um, and I really just like asked Jeff if he could handle that because, um, the commentators on and everybody on stream was waiting for me to go and, and do, um, like a post finals interview. So, yeah, thank you to, to Jeff for handling that. Um, and also, thank you to everybody who signed it. I am really sorry that I wasn't there for when the signing happened. Like, I would have loved to be present um, when everybody came around. But, um, like, I just, in my mind, I just, like, I wanted it to happen. And I didn't want anybody to leave before uh, I got the opportunity to do that. So I kind of just had to had to do things the way it was. Um, yeah, uh, I again, um, 158 participants went to Worlds. Uh, it was really really amazing um, to meet people from all over the world. We played seven seven rounds of Swiss on the Saturday. Started at what 10:30 a.m. and the last tiebreaker round didn't finish till like. 10 30 p.m. So a lot, a lot, a lot of net runner. Um, and then day two, top 16 cut. Um, and yeah, what a what a crazy weekend. But uh, I want to thank everybody for who was there. Um, everybody for even if you weren't there, um, like for for enjoying this great game with me, um, and everybody that you play with. Um, and I thank everybody for their support, uh, people who had, who had just met me on the day, met me the day before, um, even people who weren't there, but were like, were cheering me on, on the stream and especially to the people who helped me practice, helped me prepare and were right there next to me the whole time up until I scored the last agenda. Like, thank you so, so much. Your support means everything to me. Um, yeah, I'm going to jump into uh, a bit about my decks. So I played APOC Lat and I played uh, Sports Metal. So starting off with the Sports Metal, uh, it is a bit of an inter interesting deck. We I was trying to figure out how to counter Boat um, and also try to beat Hoshiko. There's a lot of ma difficult matchups, uh, and this is kind of where I got to. I basically got to pd and then it was a huge huge shout out to brandon the also known as the king who basically said um like he just mentioned like okay like he might try the pd in sports um and i was like oh maybe we should do that so um yeah so we just like took the pd deck and we Made a couple edits to turn it into more of a sports metal, like fast advancey kind of deck with some red level clearances and some biotics. And uh, we kind of got the deck to where it is. I the deck was a uh, the deck was originally on three biotics, and then I decided to cut a biotic so that I could play a second Mavris. So we originally had one ice wall instead of the second Mavris. Um, I found that eleven ice was really good. The big ice is really good. Because you kind of want something big, taxing, ending the run really quickly. And if you draw 
something big that's like a second copy or third copy of Fairchild later, it can be useful, but oftentimes you're kind of just using it to shield hippos. So I just found like loading the deck with big ice and then just drawing it early and not not being able to res later ones is not that much of a concern. One interesting thing I wanted to point it out about Loki is that Loki has a couple niche counters. Maybe they're not niche, but against Anarchs, they can't install their, their bin breaker when they encounter Loki. So they have to install their bin breaker in another method, and then they have to encounter the Loki. Uh, it didn't come up with me in my games at Worlds because I never actually resed Loki at Worlds, but there were certainly situations where I had on the board, and if it was run, I would have resed it. Uh, Alexi, also known as Axwell, played the exact same list, and he did res Loki and at least one of the games, and in that game, the player had to run Ansel on R&D to install MK, break with MK, and then run the Loki because they didn't have a way of installing their MK. So that's something that came up. The other thing that might came up is that might come up is if the runner decides to shuffle their hand away in order to not end the run, they might run into a Maverick and they might die. Um, that would be amazing. Uh, if you're playing this deck later and this happens, please let me know. I would love to hear about it. Not too much else. Uh, one off world, one bifurcation. We don't want to play three bifurcations because A, it takes up another deck slot, and B, three bifurcations is a little too many because you kind of just pass your turn and you gain a point, and the point has to be impactful. If the point is an, an, a point that isn't actually helping you in your score pattern, then uh, it's kind of a waste of a turn. So I think you ideally want to have two bifurcations, but the off world is kind of nice because you get to install advance and then play your next activation command. Um, and then when you score, you get a bunch of money. Um, seamless launches are extremely strong. They're really efficient. It's a really efficient card. It can save you a click and a credit. Um, and also, you can get your Vitruvius counters, score your off-world office with never advance, and it can help you score GFIs as well. Scoring GFI is actually a fairly... It's not like... I wouldn't say it's fairly common, but it's a fairly reasonable line where you go install GFI, play next to activation command, and then if you have an excess third click, maybe you even advance it once. Um, and then you, between Seamless, Biotic, Audacity, you can score it. And three whole points for sports, a lot of points. Um, not going to go into too much. Again, if you have questions uh, about the deck, you want to talk about it, please feel free to ask in the comments or to ask in the comments of NetrunnerDB. Uh, and I will check, although, again, going to be super busy in the next bit. So um, I will get to it eventually, but it might not be right away. Next, let's talk about the APOC lat. Um, so Apocalypse has, it's a three APOC deck. It's, uh, the previous version had, uh, I can just show. So the previous version has a clot, has, uh, two simul chips and it does not have pinhole. It does not have, sorry, it doesn't have the second pinhole. doesn't have the second mad dash. doesn't have the deuces wild. So basically this was the list. This was the list that I played on my last stream. This is this list right here. From here, I found that two pawn shops is too many because you usually want to install pawn shop when you have like three cards face down. And usually that means you've apoced twice or you've apoced once, but it's like a really late apoc. So I found that one pawn shop was good enough. Um, so I cut a pawn shot, put in a second N'Golo, because N'Golo can sometimes get you through some next activation commanded ice. So if they play next activation command, and you have boat, and they think you can't get in, N'Golo can sometimes get you there. Um, and also because it just like it just means that if your N'Golo goes face down, you don't have to try to figure out how to simul chip it. Um, you just have a, a second copy. Um, and then we get to the simul chip cut. So this was really a question of, am I going to play against sports? How scared am I of sports? Because clot and double simul chip are just dead draws in every matchup that's not sports. So uh, basically what happened is I was lining up to hand in my deck lists. We were in the line, moving closer to the front, moving closer to the front. There was like four people in front of me, and I slammed the deck list on the table, took out my pen, crossed out the clot, crossed out the two simul chips, and we wrote in a Deuces Wild, we wrote in a second pinhole, and a second Mad Dash. Uh, and then 15 seconds later, I handed the deck in, 
handed the deck, the deck list in, uh, and submitted it. Um, basically, it was a gamble that I won't play against sports, uh, because second pin hole, second mad dash, one deuces is really useful against every matchup, and uh, clot simul chip is just a really specific sports deck. On the day, I did run against run up against two sports, although I did manage to beat both of them. So considering that I won both games, it was a great change because, again, second pinhole, second man dash, one deuces is a useful card in every other matchup. Um, yeah, got, got lucky in those sports games. There were a couple good rips. The deuces wild came in really clutch against Sam Swede where I had it on the turn where I apoc so I could clear an extra tag and not get market forces for six and only get market forces for three. Mad Dash lets you draw it earlier. It means that when you APOC the board, you can Mad Dash Archives, and if you if it's not in Agenda, you take a meet, and you still have a second Mad Dash in your deck. Um, Pinhole Threading is good for countering APOC tech, which I was expecting quite a bit of. So, the reason I kind of played APOC Lat instead of Boat Chico was that I felt like Boat Chico was a very, very, very known quantity. APOC Lat was as well, but I think people were more afraid of Boat Chico, and I think for for very good reason. So I was expecting to run up against some PDs who basically got to the same conclusion that I got to, which was PD is the way to go. I just went that extra step when Brandon pointed out that maybe we could play this in sports metal. So we've put in a sports metal list, and oh my goodness, did that work out? I came into Worlds having prepped for Corp the entire time since the list dropped. I basically didn't play runner at all for for three weeks before Worlds. So I had practiced a bunch of Corp, and it was literally like a week before Worlds where we built the sports metal list, and I was just like jamming that and whenever I had time to make sure it was good. Uh, I was really confident with the sports metal list. I was more confident with the sports list than the APOC lat almost. I understood that runners were well ahead, so... I just needed to to get familiarized myself with the lat. So that's why in the team tournament, I chose to play APOC lat. And then the next day, I played APOC lat again. However, in the team tournament, I did play a clot. The sports medal list was not played in the team tournament, mainly because I did want to hide it. And I think it was really, really good. And I had been practicing it already. Again, if you have any specific questions, please ask in the comments, ask in the comments of NetmareDB, and I, I should get a chance to get to them, uh, if not right away, at some point, uh, I definitely will. If you didn't get a chance to watch the cut games or watch the stream, I will put uh, a link to the, to the cut games in the video description uh, if you, you want to watch the S Swiss games as well on day one. You can follow the follow the Null Signal Games user on Twitch, and you can get your way to that stream as well. Uh, if you're a new player and you're watching this because um, you found a video, yeah, you found this video through <laughs> through the many many ways that I'll probably be sharing it, uh, and you're interested in learning about the game, please. Uh, Check out the, the link that I will include in the description, which will be a learn to play guide. Um, and I know that uh, I'm back at Green College right now, and I will be hosting a learn to play at my residence at some point in the very near future. Uh, I bought a, a copy of System Gateway. It's, sit Gateway. it's sitting right next to me, uh, and I will be um, donating that to the residence. The residence has a game room. Uh, with a bunch of games, so I'll probably open up the system gateway. I will probably sleeve it up, and uh, I think I have an extra deck box, and I'll just put it in there. Um, and again, I'll host a learn to play. Hopefully, I'll get some players in my residence to play, <clears throat> and yeah, it'll be be a really really good time. I look forward to it. If so, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, I want to finish by saying that <laughs> I have made a lot of very good friends through Netrunner, a very large number of whom I had met here at Worlds for the first time in person, and you really all have completely changed my life. 
I want to give a very special mention to Dean Tran, who put me in tears after the tournament and multiple times more afterwards. I think the people on my plane on the flight back was like, they must have thought I was sick because I was blowing my nose a lot. Um, I want to share a story of 2019 Canadian Nationals where it was in Edmonton. I was somebody who had played locally a bunch, but I was in no position to travel. And when Canadian Nationals was in Edmonton, I was super, super lucky. Dean came to Edmonton for Canadian Nationals. I saw him just sitting at one of the tables prepping his deck list. And I walked up and I was like, oh, my goodness, is this, are you Dean? And I could recognize him because I I had seen him on streams uh, at, at World's Top Tables many times. And it was a name I recognized, it was a face I recognized. Uh, and obviously, I think he had no idea who I was. I was a complete stranger to him. And yeah, I was just like, hi, I really want to meet you. Um and I've seen you on streams a lot. I've seen you like do well at 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 Worlds. Um, yeah, it's just like an, an honor to meet you in Edmonton. And the first thing he said to me without hesitating was, I'm sure that if you had the opportunity to go to those tournaments that you would be there as well uh, at top tables on the streams. And that really stuck with me. And that was really my first interaction with anybody that was playing Netrunner outside of Edmonton and Calgary. So outside of the province, I had not interacted in person with anybody. And that was like my first interaction with somebody in the greater Netrunner community. Uh, and it, it really, really is special to me. Um, and I've interacted with Dean like throughout the last weekend here. And it it's all I can say is that Dean really is, the definition of the positivity and support that makes this community the best community. Uh, so really, really special shout out to him. Uh, that's all. Uh, I should be getting to sleep and hopefully you enjoyed the the video talking about my decks. Um, if you haven't checked out my deck lists, I will link those at the, in the description as well. Um, if you haven't checked out the stream, I will also include that in the link. And that's that's all for now. Um, I will hopefully see everybody soon. I hope everybody's enjoying their uh, their time after a very, very, um, very, very busy trip going to Toronto. Um, and I hope everybody had, everybody had a safe flight back. And I will see you all very soon. Thanks for watching.